Hey guys, welcome to Waste Not Wednesday. We go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Time and we take scraps and junk and we turn them into home decor that we sell. Um, today we are using MDF scraps. We always have a ton of leftovers after our craft kits. Um, and we're trying to actually use up scraps from the last few craft kits still. And this morning I was browsing Pinterest and I saw these, they're called uh, door pockets, but I actually think they just look kind of like wall pockets. Yep. You can like hang them on a wall, put floral in them. I know spring is coming. You could probably also drill a hole and like put some ribbon and hang them on your front door or use like a 3M strip if you wanted to. I'm going to poke a hole in that one. Zeb's going to show you how he assembled it. And I'm going to get started. If you want to use the paint and products that you see us using here today, they're all at jamierayvintage.com. And I am going to start off with an all-in-one water-based stain and sealer and glaze called dark and decrepit and i'm just going to be painting on this while zeb gives you the lowdown on how to make one of these all right let me back this camera up a little bit because i feel like you can't see the table very well there but we before are. you do that i need you to open up okay <laughs> so this was just flat pieces of wood about 10 minutes ago um can you open this though yes and i i just it was square I used, we have a couple old corbel ends that don't have uh, the sides and I cut the little foot off of this one. And I also used this as my template um, to cut this out. You can see right there, I did that side then flipped it to that side. And now we have the fun top shape too. And I did that over here on a bigger one as well. Um, I just, I did it a little different. You can see just kind of followed that pattern right there, lined it up and traced it out real quick and then just rounded the top. So this is the back of one. And then these are just square sides that I just rounded the edge off and these go together like so. So if Tell really them why confused, you don't want to paint it before you glue it. Don't paint it before you glue it because the MDF will stick to itself really, really well when you glue it. And if it's got paint, it'll act almost like a resist and it won't stay as strong. I did nail these together. Um, Jamie's got, she's a good girl and got her safety glasses on. I'm ready. Um, the dogs have chewed these. Those are hurting my ears. Do you want to switch? <laughs> nope, we're good. Um, and I'm just going to take these pieces and glue them up together. So I've got this, these all look like this square before I rounded the edges off with my jigsaw. We really like using MDF for things that are mass produced because when we put these on the CNC machine, they just cut out everything the same. It's very consistent. These would also be really cute made with scraps of wood, but MDF is just what we happen to have from craft kits. It's actually a pretty strong material if you don't get it wet or have to move it around a lot, like dressers Zeb, that are can MDF. Can you put one more nail right here? It seems like there's a little yes. happy do. Yeah. Um, it, dressers that are MDF, I feel like all the drawer sliding and opening, it's a lot of vibration and movement and they don't, they eventually don't hold up as long as you would like. You no, want on the other side, on the corner. Oh. I was going to give you one in both so the nail holes match. Perfect. Yeah. For decor though, it works out pretty well. I don't actually think it's even that much less expensive for MDF versus like thin wood. Um, plywood is still more, but only like ten dollars for a sheet. More. Yeah, it's not that for us, different. it's more about consistency. That's why we use it for our craft kits. And after we're done with this video, I'm going to get started working on the craft kit video. So I will put that up on Facebook and YouTube later today. So if you've been on the fence about the next craft kit, uh, stay tuned for that video because I will show you what we are doing and what all you will get in that kit. You have till Friday. We're going to close it off Friday. Yeah, we usually wait till the, we'd usually close it off on the 20th, but because we were late in getting our little how to video up to entice you to sign up, we decided to wait one more day. <laughs> well, a lot of people will see it and they'll be like, oh, I just want a single craft kit. I don't want the subscription. Yeah. Yeah, so they got to see it to believe it. All right, where's my front piece? Here it is. And it's going to be good. We designed two new decoupage papers for, are you done for no. a second? For this craft kit coming up. So that's, it's going to be cute. All right, I'm probably not going to do, I will paint the back, but I'm not going to worry about doing it with dark and decrepit because this is not the final color going on it. And it, the back doesn't have to All have right. the same distressed finish that the front does. Glasses back up. Oh, glasses on? Yep. Thank you. Caitlin just dropped the link for the craft kit subscription. 
So if you've been wanting to sign up, you can. If I have time in between while stuff is drying, I will show you what we have thus far for the craft kit. And so if you so don't, idea. if you don't have a nail gun and you just have like some scrap wood, if you clamp this or even just set some weight on it or whatever, the glue will hold it. Are you going to drill a hole through this later? Yeah. So that way we can hang them. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I do the bottom? I did not. That. I'm going to do all the sides because that is going to be seen. Yeah, if I just let this sit here and the glue dry, it would hold this together really well, especially for the decor purposes. We get a lot of questions about dark and decrepit, so I thought I'd cover some of those. It is water-based. Um, it does have a built-in sealer, although I do feel like if it's like a tabletop, I would always put on a regular sealer as well um, to give it more durability. But it does have a built-in sealer, and it can soak into wood like a true traditional stain, or it can go on the top of an existing finish. Just know that if you want it to be more like like deeper into the grain, are you done stapling? Yes, you can take them off for a minute. I had a nail go um, through the side. I wasn't. You want to sand it and do it like not on a shiny finish, but you can put it on the top of an existing finish. It can be used like a glaze, and when you're done, you can literally just wash it right out of your brush with soap and water. It doesn't stink. It's all natural, and a little bit goes a long way. So. There's the information on dark and decrepit. If you have any more questions about it, comment and I'll try to answer them for you. It is similar to a dark walnut color. You can add water to it. So when you get down to the bottom and you have like that layer of dark and decrepit that's kind of thick but not usable, you can add water, shake it up and use it some more. And I absolutely have done that so many times because you want to get all your use out of it. I was like, what's this busted bonus piece that I grabbed? It looks like it fell when it was a full sheet carrying it and it was a leftover end. I'm like, this is not going to work with my project. It's extra. <laughs> Do you want me to get started? Let on me that turn one? some lights on. The, are the, you going to? Oh, why are we sitting in the dark? Well, the clouds are just came through. So <laughs> we're just working in the dark over here. Um, that one needs sanded and I had a staple blow through. So you're not quite. All right. It's I'll not wait quite for time. That. I'll get started. Um, um, let me go sand it real quick. I'm just going to sand some of these corners like super square and get rid of that nail that moves inside. I'm just going to take a grinder and zip it off, but I'll go do that in the garage. All right. Uh, and I'll be right back. I'm just going to be here drying paint. Sorry if that's not super exciting. <laughs> okay. You can do multiple coats to make it darker. I just like to use it to seal up the MDF and also to give a dark base so when I wet distress, I don't get down to that MDF look. So it helps make it look more like wood. For if you're using, if you're looking for a brush for specifically for DIY paint, I would get one of their new brushes. If you're looking for something for top coats, uh, milk paint, any of the cottage color, then I would get the Klingon brushes. This one is an F30. That's a good one to start with. If you're not looking to spend a ton of money and you want something for top coats and for like uh, cottage color, you can also, we carry Zebra. That's like a really good middle of the line brush. We get asked a lot why we carry Klingon and Zebra. And it's because not everybody is ready to invest in a, a Klingon brush or a DIY brush, but they want something better than an inexpensive brush that's going to lose a ton of bristles. So that's why we carry the zipper because that one is a solid brush. It just won't last. I don't feel like as long as the Klingons or the DIY. Sorry, I just burnt myself. Um, but yeah, and I think DIY will eventually make a top coat brush and you can use their brushes with top coats, but you want to wash them right away. You, you don't want to let it sit on there. Oh, perfect. There's another one for you. Cooper's on here. Hey, Cooper. Hey, what's up? Aren't I'm you in move. class? Are you, it's just like the day know. where... Cooper doesn't have a lot of classes. Like, Yeah, he, he, took, he, took, he took a bunch of M-Tech stuff, and that's already done. He took early morning classes. and So hard to get like in here. But you guys really don't want to paint your pieces ahead of time. Because like Zeb said, the MDF will bond best to itself. So if you want the best, tightest bond, you don't want paint to interfere with that. So that's why we paint afterwards. So these are the last, I, well, I might have a couple more pieces, but I didn't have the end piece on the corbels. 
Um, the ones, if you guys have been watching the sales, we had enough to put a bunch of corbels together. And I had one extra cut, which was these solid pieces in the middle. And instead of wasting the wood, I just cut out one extra. Um, and and we now corbels. we're finding uses for them. We made corbels at the shop with some of the extras. We have a few. Caitlin, would you mind linking those corbels that we have that we made with just these? Um, oh, I think they're a, in the thrift hall collection, if I remember My correctly. My one-inch measurement is off. Um, oh, what about the blue brushes? So the blue brushes are the DIY brushes. So those are made for DIY paints. If you want one that's good for blending and made specifically for the clay-based paint, those are it. Alley Cat's confession here. I fell asleep during yesterday's live. It was a long live. I was going to film the craft kit video yesterday, but I literally, after that and business coaching, I ran out of words. It happens. And I actually wasn't done um, with painting all that stuff you saw us paint and cleaning up till about 7.30 or 8, because I had to run kids around and Zeb was going to help, but he wound up being on the phone with Apple for hours yesterday, um, trying to get them to Eliza yep. lost her phone. She lost her phone. We have Apple Care. Zeb called in. The lady said, you need to turn off, find my iPhone. And then as soon as she said that, she was, oh, oh crap. You're not supposed to do that if it's lost. Because that's how we know that this is the plan attached to your phone. And then she's like, I'm going to have to get my supervisor because I can't help you anymore. And then the supervisor came up. Anyways, hours. And then they deleted the notes saying that she said that. So now he actually has Apple reviewing the... The phone uh, call. The phone call. They're going to let me know Thursday what they decide. And he's like, this is still a long shot. I'm like, how's it a long shot? I'm I like, could, your I've employee you what screwed they up. You have it. So we're just hoping they're honest and they don't delete it because he had one guy that got annoyed by him. And then after that, all the conversation notes were gone oh, out of the file. Safety glasses first. Oh, sorry. I almost. So he spent hours doing that yesterday. So I just didn't, I didn't have time to do it anyways. Even if I had extra words to film the video. I was busy getting that done. But all of the thrift hall is now painted. I put up a short this morning. So if you guys haven't watched that, go to Facebook or YouTube. You can see all the finished projects from yesterday's uh, Paint of Palooza are on there. And we have quite a few that are still available for sale. So if you want, you can check out the thrift hall collection for those. Paul says, I placed my first order with you. I'm excited. And Vicky says, ran out of words. Your teachers would be so happy. <laughs> telling you. It happens. Alley Cat says, I'm so sorry, guys. It's all right. It happens. Some it's annoying. We just had a few issues with Apple Care. Um, and it's just hard because we try to take really good care of our customers, most of which are not spending. I mean, some of you guys are, but no, we spend thousands of dollars a year with Apple because of all of our phones. We have Apple computers, we have Apple phones. And I'm just like, I can't believe that the customer care isn't better than this. Our little tiny company like keeps track of stuff and would never like not know who had Apple care on a phone. I'm like, we've been paying for this for 10 months. How do you, how do you not know what phone? Well, it's the attached problem to? is once you disconnect it from the find my iPhone app, now they don't know that you don't just have like you can put it in the lost mode right and they don't know that i don't just have it like in my back pocket or something i guess but still it shouldn't be that Oops. complicated once she made a mistake she should have been able to go to a supervisor say i had i made a mistake and then they should be able to take care of it All right, i'm gonna go sand this my my cut was just slightly off like 16th of an inch down here i'm gonna sand it and then this one will be ready for paint too. And then I'm going to start doing paint finishes. I want to do some salt wash on one of these. So, um, repurpose my way said creative business coaching was great. The information yesterday. It's funny that yesterday we were talking about grace and business. <laughs> we were trying to give Apple grace, but after four hours, we lost our patience. It was like three, three and a half. And Amy says, everything turned out beautiful from the pin and Palooza. Thank you. It was really fun. Um, I do have a couple of things like the tray that I decoupaged. I didn't do that on camera, but I did it later. I've got to lightly distress that. But other than that, everything is all finished. It's like sometimes it's a lot of work and occasionally like halfway through, I get overwhelmed by the sheer volume of stuff I have to finish. But if I take the items and I like, okay, all these just need waxed and I put them here. All these just need to dry and I put them here. All these are finished. I'm going to move them over here. Once I do that, 
then clearly I can make a like plan to get things finished. And I do it in order of what needs to dry. So that way I'm not wasting time and then I'm able to get it all done. And then I see it all on the table and it's all pretty and I'm happy again. It's like when you have a baby and you're like, oh, I never want to be pregnant again. This is so much work, but then you're all finished and you see that beautiful baby and you're like, I could do this again. That's, that's me with thrifting every week. Oh, happy birthday, Leslie. She's headed out for her birthday breakfast pretty soon. That's exciting. All right, this one is done. I'm gonna heat gun this so I can get to the second step. I really want this to be dry, dry, dry because I'm gonna do white linen next. I think I might do a second coat of dark and decrepit though where you can see it because I want it to be dark. And you can still, this MDF really sucks that finish up and it's a little streaky and I want it to be nice and dark. So when I distress back to it, it looks good. So I'll second coat this. And the nice thing is once you get this um, MDF sealed up, it doesn't take as many coats for the next paint finishes. Now it's a little bit darker. I'll heat gun that. Had to go fill up the salt wash too. Yeah, we were out. We have a five gallon bucket. We just fill, we refill our own because we're, we're retailers so we can get five gallons at a time. I actually think you can get more than that, but. Okay, so toe, 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 three of them. Just want to make sure. I didn't put, I put one nail in the front of that, but it's so thin. It's, it's Leslie's birthday. Range. Happy birthday, Leslie. We don't have any birthdays till midsummer and then fall. We have one birthday the first six months out of the year and then for seven months <laughs> yeah well we have caitlin's birthday but as far as yes. like our immediate family goes in this house we have one birthday and then we don't have anything until july and then we have a lot between july and september and then zeb's on his own in november so we actually go longer than that yeah we go from november to july with only one birthday When it's, we call it birthday season, the end is July, beginning of August. By the time we're done, there's like, if I see another birthday. It's like cake, birthday, anniversary. So we have four birthdays in the span of 20 days uh, between July and August. And then our anniversary is August 17th. And then Jamie's birthday is in September, first of September. So we usually don't do a whole lot because it's back to school. It's football, cheer, all those things. Um, so then we kind of hold off until like October and do something kind of in between your birthday and my birthday. Right now we're trying to see my sister needs to see if she gets drawn for elk. And if she doesn't get drawn for elk, then maybe we'll be able to go back to Europe and do some shopping this fall. Well, because if she doesn't get drawn, she'll come stay with the kids. Yeah. Oh, can I see that real quick? Yep. I didn't suck a coat just right here. I want it to be really dark. And I'm probably not going to, while we're live, worry about the backs of these. I'll just paint them later. Well, so this one is a little bigger. This could be used for just like recipes, books, recipes or, or spices or whatever. Um, these are not these are not a craft kit we've ever offered. I don't know that we will just because they really should be nailed together. Um, and we try to limit the amount of. You could get away with not nailing those smaller ones. Yeah, we'll try some without nails and see how they hold up. But no, these are just actual scraps left over. So we have a lot of weird ends left over when we're making craft kits. And I'm trying to make sure this is dry, dry, dry before I paint the next coat on because I don't want to have a lighter shade of brown mixed together when I'm putting the white on. 
want it to be two very distinct layers. All right. Well, that cools down and finishes drying completely. I'll get started second coating this one, and then we're going to move on to white linen. Can I? Do you need the brush? That's... I'll go get another one. No, I have some over there for you. Oh, perfect. It's just this one fits down into the little pocket better. So maybe in a sec while we're waiting on uh, paint and patinas to dry, I'll show you what this started out with. Cause I have, I can get five boards per four by eight sheet. And then there's always a little bit left over. Um, cause I can get five big boards to put onto the CNC. Cause my CNC is only a two by three table. So it doesn't fit a full sheet of plywood. So I have to cut them down to fit. A CNC is a computerized numeric cutter. Yep. Meaning Zeb takes something and then he, um, he'll make a prototype and then he'll figure out the measurements. Then he has to program the CNC to cut it. And it's actually kind of an involved process. He had to teach himself. There wasn't a lot of training out there, but. I mean, there's whole courses you could take if I wanted to go to school for it. Yeah. <laughs> if you wanted to have a degree in machining, I guess is that what it's called? I did find quite a few helpful videos. There's one university, I wish I could remember the name, that specifically taught the program I use. And one of the professors had all of his videos on YouTube for his students. <laughs> the machine is rather expensive. So like if you were just starting out, it's not like one of those like glow forges or whatever. It's, it's pretty spendy, but it's been such a good machine for us. Okay. I think we're mostly dry. I have a few pockets where it's like, well, it just built up. more than the time saved. It's the accuracy. Like every cut's the same. It's identical. Yeah. Everything fits together nice. It's like everywhere that the the dark and decrepit pools up takes forever to dry. All right, I think we're pretty well dry. All right, next up, I'm going to put, I was going to do white linen, but I could just do milk paint. What do you think? Oh, no, I'm going to do white linen because I'm going to use birdie milk paint. That's why I'm doing it. Yeah, you want to like three-tone it? I wanted to three-tone it. Okay, next up, white linen. Make sure you stir your paint, not just on the top superficially, but you get your – I'll show you. I've already you want to scrape the bottom because if you don't, it's going to be watery. It won't stick. It won't get the and coverage it won't separate, you want. Which, oh, which reminds me, I need like to check All the, the heavy pigments sink to the bottom in this because it's got the top coat, so it just kind of separates out. Caitlin doesn't have access to our new page, and I was messaging somebody who was having an issue the other day. So you got to remember right now? Well, I got to see if she messaged back. Right now? Yeah, right now, before I forget. <laughs> this is why we use a ticket system. All right. So these, I think I want to do some decoupage on the side of this one. So I'm, I'm probably just going to go... It's either that or I can go with uh, some salt wash finish and do the blade. I've been loving the blade with the salt wash. You guys saw the crackle I got yesterday. Maybe I'll do that and then maybe decoupage the front. We'll see. All right. Sorry. Let me see what options of decoupage I have over here. I have I, most of what I've been printing has been getting sold. <laughs> So she did message me back, but she hadn't tried yet. She hasn't told me she's tried what my suggestion was, so it's not like she was waiting on me. If you ever need help, it's best instead of DMing me to email info at jamierayvintage.com because I do check my DMs, but if I get crazy busy, they don't get checked. But we have a full-time customer service manager, which is Caitlin, and she will make sure that you get answered because she checks her email um, daily, multiple times daily except for um on the weekends then she what colors of paint do you have out huh specifically not sunday but um sometimes saturday anyways it's a better option to email caitlin i try to be reliable but clearly as you just saw sometimes i forget stuff like yesterday i kept thinking okay as soon as i'm done you need to check and see if crystal got back to you and um <laughs> i forgot anyways what i have white and birdie it's okay i made some decisions do you have salt wash in your cup over there? Is that for your milk paint? What? I have water in there and I'm going to put milk paint in it. Okay. I'll get my own cup. Thank for salt you, wash. Caitlin. She put, 
the email address up there. Jamie, what would you say would be the best, easiest paint inlay to try first? Um, I love the, the rose chintz or the ephemeral melange. So you can use it in small pieces on decor. I do think the ones that are entire images are a little bit more difficult, but we did show you guys the other day how to, um, how to fix it. Like if you're doing a big inlay and you mess up a spot, how, instead of worrying about color matching, like how to just take water and use the inlay to touch up stuff with an artist brush. I made a short video on that. So if you haven't watched that and you're wanting to know how to fix inlays if they aren't perfect, um, definitely check out that video because when Zeb was doing it, I was like, oh, that's genius. Well, it's all water activated. So yeah. you just, you get a little scrap piece of inlay or even the first, if you've got it on there, it still has more uses. So you can just use what you I got. You just pulled the paint right off the inlay. Yeah, I'm not worried about like the inside of this being perfectly full coverage because I'm going to distress it. And you can you, wet distress cottage color a little bit, but um, it, you, sometimes you have to use sandpaper if it's dried because it's got a built-in sealer, so that's going to keep it from being completely water-soluble, like regular DIY paint. All right. Careful heat gunning because it can bubble. Um, do you want me to do these two and you can do that big one? Yeah, whatever. Okay. I'm working on the big one currently. All right. This one is the big one. Oh, this one. one needs to dry. I'll heat gun the dark under carpet on this. All right. That's, that is thick. It's all wash. Which is what I want. That's what I'm going for. It's getting it thick and chunky. What's that? What's that video? The Madagascar. He's like, I like it big. I like it chunky. It always makes me think of table legs because I like big chunky table legs. Oh, Bobby got her cookie jar yesterday. A plus packaging. Did you? Were you the one that bought like that vintage one? That one was really cool. Madagascar too is where it's from. What green is that? This is aviary. aviary. We we have it out because we used it yesterday. We told you guys we kind of use paint until it's all gone, and then we get a new color. Which reminds me, we need what did I finish? Weathered wood. So we got to go get like old school or something. Oh, and we're out of sandy blonde. Oh, whoops! <laughs> Careful, set that on the table there. Now we've got salt wash. Oh, you didn't darken decrepit the bottom. Not yet. I'll I'll darken decrepit that once uh, you know. Or you'll just do the top color on it. Yeah. So is that is this one made more to like sit down and not be hung? It or? can sit, but I'm also gonna put a hole in it. You can hang it if you want. Avoid that spot. Spread it is out. Is the so cow pregnant on purpose? Yes. She was artificially inseminated. Yeah, that was 100% planned. She hasn't had a calf in a couple of years. we got to freshen her up so that, uh, you know. She gives good milk. Her milk is actually still pretty good. She's just, she's down to about a gallon a day. Well, it's also because she's pregnant. Yep. Her body's busy making When you When you do calf. that, you, you stop milking about two months before the calf is born. So July? Yep, July. Brendan thought it was gypsy green. It's close to gypsy green, but it's not gypsy green. So when it Maybe dries, it's actually it's, it more leans, popular. It leans sagey. Sagey. Olive if you mix it with like white swan, it gets real sage color. So I'm just. Building a little texture here, not going to worry too much about like full coverage because I'm coming back with tarnished pearl over the top and I'm going to decoupage the front here. 
I probably won't. I'll probably just paint the back aviary. I'm not going to worry about texture on that because I am going to put on, make it so it hangs on the wall. But it'll be painted if someone doesn't want to hang it on the wall. They can just use it however. And I will right. paint the back off camera on mine because mine are definitely made to go against the wall. So I'm not doing the layered technique on all the sides. That'd be a nightmare. And this is the IOD blade. It comes in a three pack. So there's, this is the smallest size, I think. And then there's two other larger, wider ones. We use these for doing um, like raised stencils and putting texture on like this. Almost used all my salt wash up. Okay. Need a little bit. Next up, I'm going to mix up my milk paint while it was dry. What's your plan with the baby calf? If it's a girl, we will sell her. And if it's a boy, we're going to eat him. <laughs> it's farm life. Or we might sell them. I don't know. But. That's a plan. We're not. Keeping. We'll see if we can find a place. Either to way, keep we're them. not keeping them. We can if only we, have one cow. Yeah, if we're gonna, if we do wind up keeping him, once he can be separated from his mom, he'll go live on a pasture and get fed well. All right, I'm just mixing up warm water and birdie milk paint. <clears throat> and I'm gonna let this sit uh -oh. and thicken up a little. This one's. This one's on its last leg. Julie sent a laughing emoji. I'm always oh. cautious when I say that. I know some people are vegan and vegetarian, but what really gets me is the people that eat meat, but they're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe you'd eat them. I'm like, do you do you know what feedlots are like? Like the, the animals that we raise are so much better taken care of, even than most production farms, because even then they're not getting the attention that our animals are getting. So like buttercup gets scratches every day. Yeah. The chickens get table scraps and they're they're pretty much free range. They have a large the Their yard that they're large. in are is is bigger than like the pen they're in is bigger than most city yards, like most city backyards. Will you film the birth? Yeah, it'll be if we can like unless we don't catch it, uh, we'll probably unless, wind up putting it on the Jamie and Zeb YouTube channel. That's our homestead channel. Yeah. But if she like gives birth in the middle of the night, I probably won't. Julie be there. said, "No offense, she raised cows and ate them previously." Yeah, it's definitely a different way of life, like sourcing your food. But I love that, like I know where my milk comes from. I know where my eggs come from. I'm gonna be a little bit sad when we no longer have raw milk. I was thinking we need to probably freeze dry. We, some. we can start freeze drying it now since we have so much extra. Because. We were drinking a gallon a day, but when the kids are gone at school, it's kind of hard. Yeah, in the summer, when they would be drinking more, this is where we're going to have to stop milking her so she can dry up. So what do you do, like, just milk her so, less? Or how so do you it's the same like up? when you're weaning a, a kid with the Yeah, with but a we human. only milk her once a day anyways. So. Yeah, so I'll probably, like, milk her, give her, like, a day. and instead of, like, going, like, mm -hmm. once every day, I'll extend it out to 30 hours, 48 hours. You know, you don't want to, like, just dry her out all at once. She gonna I mean, be she'd, mad probably, at you? she'd probably be okay, but you, she can also get mastitis if you do it like that. Are you done with the dark and decrepit? Yes. I'm working on my crackle. All right. I'm just mixing up milk paint because I don't really have anything else to do while the paint dries. And it, I'm trying to make sure it's all. If yeah, you this let will your be. Paint, oh, go I'll go, you go ahead. If you let your milk paint sit like 10 minutes after you mix it, it will thicken up. And it won't be as watery. Yeah, you were actually saying something. I was just thinking about the cows. So Buttercup, she's she's six years old now. Um, and she's had two other calves. So this will be her third. Yeah. And I know it's definitely not for everybody like to do that. But it's just what we do. At so. this point, she's almost an old pro. Buttercup? Yeah. yeah. And they're pretty good unless there's like a breach or something weird going on. They They have them on their own. You don't really have to do much. And we, so we bred her because we, we are in it for like to get the maximum amount out of her. We wanted to be comfortable for her as comfortable as possible. That's part of the reason we artificially inseminated her because 
when we bought her, they said that when they tried to breed her with a bull, she got hurt. No, she didn't get hurt. The, bull, the bull broke his back. Uh, she was not. She wasn't oh, amenable. She, she wasn't a willing participant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something like that. Anyway, so we decided to do AI, but we bred her with a mini jersey, so her baby will be smaller. And she's a smaller cat cow anyway. She's like a 700-pound jersey, so we bred her with a mini. Like, the cow that we bred her with is only, like, three feet tall. So we're hoping, since it's like her third calf, that this cow will just whoop! <laughs> It'd be like me giving birth to, like, a four-pound baby as opposed to a nine-pound baby. Because all my babies were eight and a half to nine pounds. I really should have thought about that. I should have asked your mom ahead of time, how big were your babies? Because I remember after I got my pregnant. My sister with, Katie was the smallest and she's almost six feet tall. The I remember your mom telling me, my kids had huge heads. I was like. But she was seven and a half pounds. I think Abe was the biggest. He was almost nine. And Abe is actually the... Uh, the smallest in stature of the boys. He's he's like <laughs> six one ish, Grandma, and weighs like one hundred and sixty five pounds. <laughs> Grambo said, "Abe's at six foot, if that, because you're not quite six two. Don't lie to the people. I'm six two. Um, you were when you had hair. <laughs> Grambo <laughs> said he should have taken her out to dinner first. Right. You gotta go to dinner. Have a proper first she date. is very motivated by food and it's funny because some days she just wants grain when we're milking her and some days she wants alfalfa pellet and it, it was this way even before she was pregnant but i feel like it's worse now yeah so you didn't do that on the front no i'm gonna decoupage that oh okay You're, what are you gonna put on it what decoupage paper the butterflies oh okay all right let me check this out i'm decoupaging this on the front lip of this and i didn't salt wash it because of that because i didn't want the texture there to decoupage did you take my heat gun i put one there for you this one's weak and i needed the fast crackle i've got some good crackle i'm going to show you in just a second still in my heat gun all right mine's almost dry so i'll use the crappy one after this remind me to order one smacking my butt on camera you going to take me to dinner sure i made you breakfast does that count for it anything? It was good. It was a good breakfast. How about I take... Well, I can't take you to lunch because I'm getting my hair cut today. I get my hair cut like twice a year. Can't miss it. <laughs> it's a big ordeal. I'm getting my hair cut today and I got to film the video for the craft kit. That's my afternoon. But I could take you to dinner. But unless you're too busy... Aren't you going to be working out at the... I do need to go. All right, guys, Crackle. I'll bring you dinner. Crackle City. Look look at those big old chips. It's like, this is these little pockets, it's not dry yet. <laughs> Julie said that her babies were now nine pounds, and so is she, and her son's about to have, well, his her son's wife or girlfriend, I don't know who, but about to have a baby. Um, and she knows that that baby's going to be big, too. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't tiny. I was like seven pounds something. Eliza know. was a few weeks early and she was like seven and a half pounds and she was my smallest baby. She kind of looked like a chicken. <laughs> she was tall and skinny and she was orange because she had jaundice really bad and she's such a pretty girl. But man, when she was first born, it was touch and go there for a while. And she was bald forever too. That's my fault. That, that is your fault. My family all, all has a decent amount of hair. So this doesn't have salt wash. This is just aviary. I'm just putting it on the bottom. There's a little bit of salt wash remnants from me making a mess with the blade, but not not much texture on the bottom of this. Did you use this brush for wax once? Mm, there's a high chance. All right, and now I'm going to paint the back too. It's feeling weird. All right, well, I'm going to get the milk paint on here. I think I'm going to have to do a couple of coats. I must have made it too thin. I don't have any more milk paint. Maybe I should just, you know what I can do to make this thicker? Can you pass me the, where's the flower sack milk paint? Did I put that up? I don't have sure. any more birdie, but this paint needs to be thicker. I'm going to be all day with this situation. I don't know. What if I put some all right, So the back is painted in case someone doesn't want to hang it, but also, um, Put some gum drop not, in not it. gonna worry about salt wash there. 
oops. I was trying to use up this little bit of sample that I had left of birdie and I put too much water in it. So I'm going to add some gumdrop. It's going to be more green. It's okay. You should actually measure your milk paint. Now this looks more like juniper. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to get this dry, and then I've got tarnished pearl that I'm going to paint on the front, and then I will seal it real quick so that I can decoupage it. Well, I'll just put some medium. That'll be the sealer portion. I'll decoupage it. How about that? Now it's like a teal turquoise color. That's pretty. So note just how Bernie and Gumdrop make a really pretty, like, um, between a duck egg and a teal color. almost a 50 50 mix maybe a little bit more birdie than gumdrop okay. so once i put the tarnished pearl on i'll probably dry that out and then wet distress this texture and salt wash back through um, so that we still get that good crackle and then we won't lose all the green it'll and it'll tone back some of the aviary the aviary is good like this it's one of my favorite colors but it, it's going to get like a light, almost sagey color when we put the tarnished pearl on there. Isn't it funny that I wasn't trying to be a twin with you, but now we have similar colors? Look at that color. By the time I get the tarnished pearl on mine, we're going to almost be the same. <laughs> I just had to oh. use what I had, and I had a bunch of gumdrop left. Paintbrush down. Admittedly, gumdrop on its own on its own isn't a color I'm going to use a lot, but it does mix well with birdie. Okay, so I'm going with the lighter color where I'm going to do this uh, decoupage. This is the new rice paper. We also have this in the tissue paper to 20 by 30. The rice paper is the A4 size. It's like eight and a quarter by 11 and three quarters almost. 1044. I'm never going to get mine finished. We got to get after it. We gotta I'm going to get to it. Do we have actual um, sandpaper here? Mm. I am not going to worry if this is like perfectly painted on the inside. I only have, no, this is 220, but it's got some yellow on it. Add some yellow to your day. Well, that's fine. I don't need it yet, but thank you. I'm gonna roll it into my wet paint. We're going to go over there. Your cord is like. You can just knock it off, but don't unplug it. There you go. I was just trying not to get paint all over it. So I'm also not going to worry about full coverage on this because wet distressing. I mean, we're going to do pretty good. But if I have some peekaboos on the green, I'm not going to worry about it. Peekaboo. All right. I'm going to dry the bottoms of these and then I'll flip them over and put one coat of this gumdrop birdie mixture on the back. So this is all still a little wet. I can feel that it's cool to the touch. That's a good indication that your paint is still wet, especially underneath. Like the top layer might be dry, but when using salt wash, you can still feel it'll be cool to the touch if it's still wet. We need, I'm going to have so much of this paint made up. I'm going to have to go in the garage and grab something and paint it. I'll come make you some more totes. <laughs> well, we have those benches that the paint all chipped off. The other day, I was like, we could sand those down. I could just paint them in this and not use a heat gun on it. And not use a heat gun on it? I think part of it was also there's a lot of grease on them. I'm going to put this over here because I'm going to have to use the other one. Are the dogs still in the backyard? I think so. I think that's your mom. Oh. Making some noise. See that heat gun? It's it's almost done. It's plugged in. <laughs> there you go. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. Actually, we don't cook with peanut That's oil. That's the one in time when whacking something, an electronic device actually makes it work we don't use peanut oil we use avocado oil and coconut oil in our house 
and animal fat. Although I'm not using bacon grease anymore because my doctor said no more. Can we buy one without you painting it? Um, no, because I don't know that we're making any more of these. This is a Waste Not Wednesday to kind of give you ideas. We will sell these ones and we might circle back and make more because I have a lot more scraps. But right now we have so many other pressing projects. Unless we're doing it for a video, I'm not really making crafts. Yeah, Zeb's in the middle of irrigation and then we're going to start a remodel project on the cottage. We got trees to trim at our house. Yeah, I'm late on that. Should have done it in the fall. Didn't get to that, you know, all these things. So we're going to have exactly three of these. And then we got 150 craft kits to make. One more. 160. It's still, it's still open. Will you be making some of the sheep cutting boards soon? Maybe in like a month. The trouble is on the Getting, sheep cutting boards the is the the wood to get it. When the, we go to buy pick up the MDF at National, maybe we can check out their wood. Yeah, but they don't like you to call it. Well, they like to you just give you what's on the top and you're done. Maybe if you if you smile at them. Do you want me to ask? No. I, you know, if we get the certain types, they've got some just sitting over there. Um, well, as look. boards in this in the second section. Let's see if we can get the right section. wood that we need. And you can go through that. Yeah, I got to go there this afternoon. So if we find the right lumber, then we'll be good to go. And we stopped for a little while because wood was so expensive, it wasn't cost effective. But the price has come down. On so, some things. On some things. So that maybe we'll be able to do some more of those. I'm about to decoupage and bring this thing home. Yes, my mom came home because it was hot in Arizona. Yeah, she's been home it's too. been windy here and so she she has copd she hasn't really been outside but she does like to sit outside by the pool um while the kids are swimming oh you got some crackle on that yeah and it didn't all chip I, off look at that well it's not dried all the way i'm trying to let this cool because i need to paint the back oh and then i wanted to stamp the front you got 11 minutes i i feel like i could bring it home in 11 minutes i might not get to sealing it up but we'll get it mostly finished. I'm painting the back. I don't even know if Les is watching, but I'm painting the back. I probably would wait till we were no longer live, but milk paint doesn't keep. You kind of got to use it while you have it. And I don't know. Like I told you, I got a busy afternoon, so got to get it as done as possible. All right, that's dry enough. I can put it on its back. The nice thing is not too hot, so maybe it, maybe it won't all chip off because it's not that hot. It's like a medium hot. That that low heat gun. It's like a low, a low, it's a low speed. heat gun. Do you have any more clean brushes? Um, no, but there's, I washed all the brushes yesterday. What about these ones over here? Those are the ones from today. We've used like all the brushes. Dry this out. I still have to paint the bottom of mine. I'll get that once we're, you know, not trying to show you what it's mostly going to look like. My hands are wet. Didn't you use this yesterday? I need to just use yours, maybe. This is mostly dry. All right, liquid patina. I, to, I shouldn't have painted the back. I knew I shouldn't because I got to lay this back to stamp it. Oh, well, I don't think it'll chip off the back because the the back was literally raw MDF. All right. Rice paper. Mm -hmm. 
It says blurry. Are we blurry for anybody else? It might have just been when we had to reset it. They could be behind. Hopefully not blurry. I'll go look and see if I can fix it in just a sec. All right. Then a layer of liquid patina over the top. Jill says it's better. So it might have been internet, either ours or theirs. So I think we're, we're good there. Like as far as the camera goes, there's nothing wrong with the camera. It was an internet right, issue. Because sometimes they, uh, it'll get blurry when we get close-up shots. Okay, let me see. I think this is mostly dry. Okay. Grandma says it's perfect for her. I like to do this so that way it'll have a dry surface. So this is just like a, what we call a wet tear or wet cut. It's not going to be perfect. I got a little, but that's going to work with my distressing. I'm just going to sand this because I want to stamp it. And I want to, I'll sand the rest later, but I want the underneath sanded before I stamp it. Okay, now I got all like this weird texture and, and not full coverage paint. I got to fix that. Okay, we're going to bring this texture back. I'm going to heat gun it just a little more on the sides so that I can get that dry. I wanted to get that decoupage paper going though, so that I can maybe sand that when we're, before we go in five minutes, so I'm seven bringing, minutes. I'm wet distressing the edges kind of down to that dark and decrepit. I don't know if I'm going to get to the dark and decrepit on mine. I, I got some salt wash on here. All right, I'm going to show you because people say, why do you do so many layers? Sometimes it's hard to see it on camera, but in real life, it's there. All right. Can you guys see? Well, I'm trying not to touch it because it's kind of wet. See all? See if you can see it. Oops, blurry. There we go. Blurry. Hopefully you can see it. The edges are dark, and then the white's peeking through, and then the milk paint's on top, and it's all crackly. And I've sanded it smooth. Oops, I just it was wet, and I rubbed my finger across it, so it got a little chippy there. It's perfect. <laughs> I don't want to blow heat, on it, Jamie. Well, I don't want to heat gun it. Next up, I'm going to um, stamp it. I just got to decide what I want to stamp it with. I brought options. So we have the campaign stamp, and that's got like cows and chickens. I got the original farm animal stamp that IODs have forever. If I just wanted to do one farm animal, what do you think? Trying to see which one fits. I think or the cow, I just do like an all over words. And you know what? The um, the pig would fit on there perfect. The like you could get the whole pig on there. You want to just do just the pig? Yeah, I think that okay. would be good. All right. I'm going to use an oldie but a goodie. So this is our pig stamp, the IOD stamp. We carry them on the website. I'm going to use black ink. This is permanent ink. So once it dries, I can um, seal it. It does have longer open time, so I won't seal it probably for a few hours. But you could also roll some paint on here if you wanted to like make it look more hand painted, but I'm gonna use ink. All right, my pig's on there. Once you pick a spot, you gotta commit. I'm pushing down on it. You could also use the backer if you want to, but I'm going freestyle with this. And there we go. There's my piggy. So now all I have to do is finish distressing the rest and seal it up. Probably bring out more of the white. Now I have to decide. I'm probably not going to do a pig on the other one. I'll do something different on this one. Sorry, I gotta move it back here. Those are IOD stamps. Yes, this is the farm animal stamp. And it's probably from one of their earlier releases. We've had it for years. It like was the first thing I ever put on a rolling pin. Yeah, so we probably had that particular stamp for like four years. Can I have the other? You need the, the one with the good juices? Caitlin, if you're still watching, can you throw an order in for another uh, heat gun? <laughs> Actually, no, never mind. It's drying it. It's going. Yeah, I think this one's better just because it's not quite as intense with the milk paint. Corey says, oink, oink. 
You know us, we love the farm animals. Caitlin says, you sure? I can do it. Maybe you should have a backup. Yeah, definitely order an extra one. We'll keep this half-fired one here as the backup. How are you coming with your design there? It's coming good. You know what else would have been cool on here is the newsprint paper that we've got. I might do that one small and retouch up some of the designs because I hand did all of those newspaper ads on the Rambo newsprint says you're paper. the expert at the stamp rolling pins. He really is. I tried to do one the other day. He's like, how'd you get that slightly crooked? I'm like, listen, Linda. I've gotten a couple crooked. It yeah. happens. It's not that it's not that hard to get them crooked. You, if you'd one little slip. Like let that cool down before I distress it. I had I shouldn't this bottom, I think it was still a little tacky. It's starting to chip off. It's all right. I want to make it look like old wood, so are you using my wet distress rag? This one was in there and no one had touched it. Yeah, that's what I used earlier. It's all right. I won't wet distress this. I don't want the tarnished pearl on it. This one's a little chippier. We need to do a batch of rags. I think we have a bunch of dirty ones in the laundry room. Okay, I'm gonna do something different on this one. I don't know what. Should I do the... I'm about to bring it for a close up on all the texture so you guys can see what all this work has been for. do the lay courier stamp. Have you used an IOD transfer on rolling pins? I don't know if we have. I mean, you could. We've I haven't done a transfer, them. but I mean, it would be pretty easy to do it. You just throw it on there, roll it around, then release it. Oh, in case anybody wants to heat the the heat gun link, Caitlin linked it. All right, I'm going to make sure this is lined up. Okay, hold on just a second. Can you stop for just a second? Shaking the here. Got it. Thank you. So this is the newsprint. What's this called? I don't know. It's the French uh, newsprint stamp. The courier Caitlin, you know? or something. It, yeah, it's the courier. Le is courier. it Le courier? Is it's that right there? Oh, it's on there. Yes, Le courier. And this one is different elements, so you can mix it up. But I leave it as is. All right. This is not quite dry. It'll brighten up as we go. And I might distress it back and make it look like it's pretty weathered like the rest of it. Um, but let's see, still got some of my crackle on there. We didn't lose that. That looks good. Besides, this is similar to what we do to corbel finishes when we do corbels to make them look like super old. And some of this is darker than it will be. We'll wax it or seal it with a, <clears throat> excuse me, with a top coat, but and that'll change the look just a little bit, but mostly this is gonna be how it looks. I like how that turned out, that's cute. All right, we will get these finished up today and by tomorrow for our shop tour, they'll be listed or they might get listed today, I don't know. I am we'll gonna put a hole like up. right in the center right here. If you have questions about these or making your own scrap wood projects, feel free to comment below. You can email us at info at jamierayvintage.com um, and you can shop jamierayvintage.com for the paint products and our projects. If you like this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more. DIY. Love you guys. Thanks for joining us. Did they get to see the pig close yeah, up? That's all blurry. Oh well. You'll get them a good pick later.